Every two years, thousands of the world's finest athletes compete for the highest accolades at the World Life Saving Championships. Between the 1st and 9th of September 1994, life savers from over 30 nations were represented at the first event of this magnitude ever to be staged in the United Kingdom. The championships are divided into two sections, still water and ocean. Cardiff Empire Pool was the venue for the still water part of the competition and Newquay for the ocean section. The still water events demonstrate specific disciplines necessary to perform as lifesavers. This is the part of the championships where the non-surfing nations can show their mettle and a number of Olympic swimmers were included in the national teams. Running concurrently with the national event was the World Inter-Club Competition. This comprised 105 teams with up to 12 competitors, male and female. One of the major disciplines in the pool was the 200 meters freestyle swimming with obstacles event. The men's final proved very close, with Daniel McClellan of Australia just getting the touch ahead of Hans Bielmans of Belgium and Brent Foster of New Zealand. The formidable Simone Cotter of Australia won the gold in the women's event. Michelle Thorne of Surf Life Saving Great Britain achieved the first home medal when she narrowly beat Annika Morin of Sweden. Yeah. 
Next event was the 100 meter mannequin rescue with swim fins. Germany's Klaus Hermes dominated this final, leaving Bart Raymond of Belgium and Adam Weir of Australia to settle for the joint silver medal. Paul Bethel of New Zealand took the bronze position. In the women's final, Commonwealth silver medalist Rebecca Perrot of New Zealand was the only non-European in the final five. Barbara Goetke of Germany won the gold and Annette Nass of Sweden was the bronze medalist. Fourth placed Conchita Ezcatlar of Spain was to feature later in the championships in an incident which was to illustrate the more serious nature of the sport. The 4x50 rescue tube relay produces a shock mistake by South Africa. The rescue tube slips from the patient's grasp, leading to their disqualification, and allowing Australia another gold. Italy takes silver, and New Zealand the bronze. The first UK gold was awarded to the Royal Life Saving Team for their quick thinking and skills in the initiative assessment event. At the end of the four days in Cardiff, the national team event was led by Australia, with Germany second and New Zealand in third position. In the club event, North Cronulla had the satisfaction of beating their rivals Kuji into second place, shared with Kochenbroich of Germany. The town of Newquay on Cornwall's Atlantic coast was chosen for the ocean events of Rescue 94. The contest site was at Fistral Beach, scene of many international surfing competitions and with a high reputation for testing wave conditions. On Tuesday, the first day, clear blue skies, light winds and warm sunshine greeted the arrivals. An air of optimism was felt by all involved in the events for the next four days. A good-sized swell was running with the incoming tide, and very soon the inshore rescue boat team were called into action to collect an abandoned inflatable. Would the non-surfing nations be up to the challenge? Um, well, we're hoping for the surf to come down a bit, but um, it's nothing to do about it, is it? I think we'll do all right. It's not, we haven't practiced that much on the board and ski, but on the swimming we'll be all right. Um, what I did do, if anybody wants a copy of this, they're up in the bag and I'll get them. It's just where I think the judges should stand for each of the events. In other words, you know, I mean, if, if I was setting up the areas, I've given a copy, I've given a, a dozen copies that I've made off today. North, North Cronulla this year ran second in the Australian. Right. And who was the first? Cronulla. Cronulla. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, they, right. Yeah, the club next door to us. Yeah. So uh, it'll be a pretty good competition. They're, they're not Are up they here? Are yes. they here? Yes. Oh, right. right. They're the current world uh, defending champions. Yeah. And, um, and being next door neighbours, it's a uh, local no, derby sure. and we're trying to get them up. Yeah. So, and we'll do it.
minutes being hidden behind others in layers of two and three. But uh, I noted in the Belgian uh, group there with the national flag, that tricolour of Belgium that competed so strongly at the Wales Empire Pool in Cardiff. The greatest pleasure, as I declare, Rescue 94 in Cornwall, open. The Red Arrows. The Big Vixen Roll. After the Red Arrows, it was time for the International Ironman event. New Zealander, Corey Hutchins. You know, definitely Trevor's number one, and I'm also looking at the South African and the English this competitor as well. I think that should be about the top four. competed in the International Ironman competition. The race is in three legs over the same distance. These include surf ski, paddleboard and swim. The order is decided by lottery prior to the event. Oh, 
Surf Los Angeles, Australia, followed in by Corey Hutchins of New Zealand. Right into the ski leg for Andy and Hutchins. There's Chalotsky from Surf Los Angeles, South Africa, going through in fourth. That's uh, Glenn Eldridge of Surf Life Saving Association, Great Britain. Go, Next morning, the women lined up for the Run Swim Run event. 
Yeah, the surf conditions are quite good, so I hope we do quite well. Um, I think we've got a good chance. We've got a horrible um, short break, but we'll manage, definitely. I'm going to the run, swing run. Are you going to win? I don't know. <laughs> this is the first time she the first time I, uh, tried. Round them. Round, round There we go, ladies and gentlemen, with the start of uh, the open run swim run for women, event number nine. We have, as I said earlier, our 23 contestants lined up at the start. They go around the uh, blue and uh, white flags there on the right-hand side of the beach. And once the again, the black and white quartered cap with the fern leaf out there from uh, Surf Life Saving New Zealand, Royal Life Saving Society UK challenging. The course has been shortened for the ladies. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. It wasn't long before the Spanish contestant Conchita Scatla found herself in difficulties. Erm Matosti and Annalisa Santori, the Italian competitors, abandoned their positions by immediately going to her aid, staying with her until the beach rescue unit came out with the torpedo. Later, a special award was made to the girls for their selfless action. The race continues with Simone Cutter, who leads the field, being closely pursued by Michelle Thorne and Carla Gilbert. Harry Windmill, the charismatic commentator, makes a rare mistake identifying Michelle's black swim cap as that of a New Zealand team member. And, uh, there they come up around that flag. Australia leading New Zealand, Australia leading New Zealand, and Australia in third place. And I tell you what, this could be won on the sand. This could well be won on the sand. This could be done on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, let's hear the encouragement for them. I tell you what, they've done it tough for you. Thank you, we've got the correction. It's uh, UK, Great Britain in second place. Come on, let's hear it for them there. Great effort indeed from those ladies. Australia, UK, Australia. That's unofficial, of course. With the tide receding, the competition moves to the beach area in which the Asian teams had high expectations. Japan, move forward a little bit, please. Get going. In the beach flags Japan. event, competitors' reactions are tested. Right. At a blast of the whistle, they race to claim a baton, and always there is one less baton than contestants. South Africa take third place, leading to a final between Japan and Indonesia.
Yatsutoshi Kujirai wins with Inenge Madia coming second. Third place belongs to Justin Pogeta. In the women's semi-final, the last three are Mary Sayward Peras of Great Britain, Veronica Lee of Australia, and Masami Yusa of Japan, leaving a final between Australia and Japan. For the first time in world competition, one country wins gold in both men's and women's events, and the Japanese are ecstatic. In the men's beach sprint, it is Callum Taylor of New Zealand who takes the gold medal. Veronica Lee is overwhelming in the women's sprint final and competes again in the team relay, here handing over the baton to Ironman champion Trevor Hendy. But it's South Africa who come through to triumph. For South Africa, it is their first gold medal in ocean events in 20 years. The national events over, action continues with the inter-club events. And next morning, the men's taplin heats commence in waves of increasing size and power. Even the inshore rescue boats experience difficulty getting through the shore break. But for competitors, the rides back to shore make the effort worthwhile. The women's ski race was due to follow the Taplin heats. But having watched the struggles of the men, they were concerned whether they would be able to cope with the testing conditions. Kerry Thomas of Maruchi Dor takes advantage of a gap while the other girls struggle in the shore break. Lisa Pritchard of Aberporth in Wales chases Kerry out and suffers whiplash injury in a nasty wipeout. Undeterred, she continues to chase the leader. By now, Kerry Thomas has fought her way out to the turning boys. Smiling Kerry paddles her way to victory.
To the delight of her family, Lisa Pritchard gets second place. And coming in third, Caroline McIlwain of Blue Water Bay, South Africa. Would you please acclaim the surf life saving skills of the young lady from Maroochydore, Queensland in Australia, Terry Thomas? <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome from Aberport, the silver medalist, Lisa Pritchard. <laughs> from the Republic of South Africa and from the Blue Water Bay Club, Carolyn McElroyne. Shuttle service going from here to Town Beach for the water events, and it is situated up by the uh, cafe. The conditions at Fistral made competition too dangerous, and the contest site was relocated at Town Beach in New Key Bay. For non British competitors unfamiliar with the large tidal range, it was difficult to understand how the event could be completed at the new site, with waves breaking over the seawall and no visible signs of beach. But after a short delay, the tide receded, and the men's surf race final was marshalled in ample deep water.
Overall it was great, you know, with the conditions being too rough to hold it here today and moving around the corner, and even a wave came up for the finals there too, so I've loved it, the town's been great, the people have been really friendly and uh, the competition's been excellent. The competition has been fairly good actually, and a few surprises, what, what nations, what individuals stood out? Um, well for starters, Corey Hutchings, who I race against all the time at home in Australia, he, um, him and I had a great race in the International Ironman on Tuesday night to start the week. and. Uh, He's going exceptionally well, but the, the whole New Zealand standard is raised and it easily could have gone the other way in the competition between Australia and New Zealand. Um, then there's the, the uh, South Africans who won the tap on relay today in the Interclub. Um, have some great board paddlers, ski paddlers, swimmers. Um, Japanese won the both flags, men's and women's. Um, and excellent sprinters as well. And, and even the Ironman uh, got sixth in the international Ironman competition. So. The Japanese have improved a great deal, um, the Italians, the French, the Germans all did well in different events in the surf, you know, and, and uh, last but not least the British have done exceptionally well. It's been great. Where the earth meets the sea, where the waves meet the sky, where people meet the water, we'll be standing by, where such a fickle sport that on the day anyone can win you know so you had that respect for each other and uh, you're really not only racing the person next to you you're racing the conditions as well so the guys are all great mates which is probably for a sport with so many countries it's probably one of the only sports in the world where everyone talks to each other Yeah.